Hello, uh, Kieran here, and welcome to this sort of Media Studs film uh, special on Hammer Horror. Uh, it's going to be part of a series, quite a quick series, but I'll tell you why I'm doing this. A couple of weeks ago I got a massive box set full of about 30 Hammer Horror films, and uh, I just really wanted to uh, talk to uh, you about it, go into a bit more depth, and uh, I hope you enjoy. Okay, so for this first episode I really wanted to knock some of your preconceptions about Hammer out of the water. Now most people think that Hammer's set in Bray Studios is quite a camp, um, you know, sort of dress up and play sort of studio. They're mostly remembered for their uh, Frankensteins and Draculas. And if you remember in the first episode of uh, Media Studs film, me and Pip discussed Dracula Prince of Darkness and quite flippantly dismissed it as uh, a camp quintessential um, horror, hammer horror, but in the early 70s they produced some quite dark and some may say sophisticated work that is still quite disturbing today. Um, so one of those is what we'll be talking about today. Straight On Till Morning is a haunting and melancholic piece. It's from director Peter Collinson, a director of The Italian Job, and a uh, writer John Peacock. Now, it's an 18th uh, certificate, and it's going to be hard to do a, a short synopsis of this film because, I mean, the story isn't complicated. It's just it's very hard, especially in the first sort of 20 minutes, to find a thorough um, storyline. It, it sort of splits between flashbacks. Um, of the main character's life and why he's in this situation between sort of contemporary 1970s um, London. Now, I'll do, I'll do my best to describe the story. So Brenda, uh, Brenda's sort of mid-twenties uh, lady, and she wants a baby. Um, she want she wants a baby badly, so she leaves um, her mother, who lives in Liverpool, um, to go to London to find a partner. Now she tells her mother that she's pregnant, but she's not. So she goes to London, she gets a job, um, but then she finds a man that she thinks she loves, but then he leaves her inexplicably for a more attractive um, person who is Brenda's friend. Now, whilst Brenda's um, sort of walking, being sorry for herself across a bridge, and, and this is my problem, she isn't a sympathetic character, and um, stop me if this is a spoiler, but um, Peter, um, who is a psychopath, is um, a more sympathetic character. He's he's more interesting. Brenda's just a, a vacuum of sort of... She's, she's very childish. She writes stories um, for her unborn child, who hasn't even been conceived yet, about um, uh, sort of fairies and stuff. And then he, she reads him... Um, to Peter, but anyway, um, she's walking on this bridge, um, and then she comes across this dog. Now, um, she sees the owner who's looking for it, but she doesn't return it, she takes it home. The next day, she looks like on his collar, and then takes it to its home. Her, who should open the door but Peter? Um, they, she comes in, and Peter asks why she's come, and she tells him that she wants a baby. Now, strangely, Peter accepts this, and they l start living together. What ensues is um, a disturbing look into what isolation can do to a person. And Peter, Peter's backstory is the real heart of this film. He's been, I mean, it, it's never explicitly told, but it's hinted at his father left, um, his mother abused him, he's now living on his own, own he he's very beautiful he seduces women and I, I can tell you this because it's in the first 10 minutes of the film and he murders them um in his uh, bedroom uh, once again with the hammer horror film the performances are not only incredible but magnetic shane bryant who plays peter um who murders his um uh, sexual partners sort of draws you into the story in a way where you do start to feel slightly sympathetic towards him. And Shane Bryan, yeah, I think, is, is fabulous. And um, he was once, he, he was groomed to be the new um, Peter Cushing. Um, 
as was Ralph Bates, and Shane Bryant was also in Demons of the Mind, in which he was the best film in uh, piece. He was the best thing in that film, and um, I, I really like him. Now the person who plays Brenda is, I mean, I I can give a take, I can leave Brenda. She's you know, she, the heart of this film is Peter, and um, what I mean. Look, the story is strange. In fact, it's it's strange and twisted. It, it's hard to find a way it could have come ar about. I mean, it, apparently, you know, straight on to the morning, it's referenced Peter Pan. He's called Peter. He then makes her Wendy. Uh, but the script is very well written, although it is a bit um, too avant-garde for its own good at times, in the first 20 minutes especially. It's an enjoyable ride, uh, with some mind-bending moments, and some simply genius parts. I mean, there are parts which made me cry, made me laugh, you know, it scared me, but ultimately, it's forgettable, until you watch it again, and then the memories start flooding back. Well, I hope you enjoyed that. Uh, see you next time.